right, today we're going to do something that seems to be completely different from what we've been doing in this chapter, which is writing equations of lines. So today we're going to do arithmetic sequences, and our essential question is, how can you predict the 15th number in a pattern? Well now, even though this is called arithmetic sequences, and it sounds different, it really is just a line, and you're going to see how this works. So an arithmetic sequence is a pattern of numbers where the change between the consecutive terms is constant. Okay, that's a big mouthful. Let's break that down. So we're going to have a pattern of numbers, and the difference between the numbers that are next to each other is going to be the same number every time. That means it's going to have the same rate of change, which is the exact same thing as our slope. Okay, so that means because it is adding or subtracting the same thing every time, that means it's got to be a linear equation. All right, they also use a thing called terms here, okay, numbers that are next to each other. The terms is the order of the number, or the order number in your pattern. Okay, so if you look at my example here, these are my pattern, so this would be the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, the fifth term. It's just what's the order number. Now, the essential question is asking us what the 15th number is, and we could probably figure that out pretty easily. But what if I asked for the 115th number? So what we're going to do today is we're going to figure out how to predict this without having to write out 115 numbers. So the first thing we got to do is when we're given a series, we need to make sure that it is arithmetic, and we need to make sure it is the same thing every time changing between the terms. So we're going to look here to see what is happening between these two numbers, these two numbers, these two numbers, and make sure it is the same thing every time. So let's see, it looks like I am adding 4 to get a 1, then I'm adding 4 again to get a 5, adding 4 again to get a 9. It's the same rate of change every time, and the rate of change is going to be positive 4. Now, in arithmetic, in arithmetic sequences, they change the word slope to common difference, and they use the letter D, but don't be confused. It still is just the slope, and we can substitute with the letter M. Now, the problem that we have here is before we had points, right? We had an input and an output. We put in a 3, and we got out a 7. And we used an equation, but we don't have an equation, and we don't have ordered pairs. So we need to figure out what do we do. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the order number up here. And we're going to say, all right, then, that means that number th negative 3 is my first term, number Na a positive 1 is my second term, 5 is my third term, etc. Now, they use a notation that's a to the 1, meaning the first term is negative 3. The second term is 1. So when you see that in the textbooks, it's just renaming stuff for us. But if we put in ordered pairs, which we could, we could say the first term is negative 3. And the second term is positive 1. The third term is 5, fourth term is 9, fifth term is 13, and that's all we have so far. All right, so what we need to do is we need to figure out the pattern for this equation, just like we did before. And wait, we have points now. So we could find the slope, and then we could find the y-intercept, just like we did the last few days. So the y-intercept is where the x is equal to 0, meaning we need to know where this started. We need to know the y-intercept, the 0 point. What was the very first number that we started to with this sequence? All right, so the steps are going to be exactly the same as they were the last two days. We're going to start with the equation y equals mx plus b. We're going to substitute in a point that we have to find our slope. Oh, wait, we've already found our slope. We already know the change is 4. So all we really have to do is just substitute in what we have, solve for b, and we can get the pattern. Then from that, we can figure out what the 15th number would be. So all right, let's take what we have. We have y equals mx plus b. And we've already shown that the difference between each of these numbers in the series is positive 4. 
So we're going to substitute in our positive 4. Then we're going to choose one of these numbers here, one of these numbers. I'm going to choose 2, 1. doesn't matter which one you choose, so let's pick an easy one. So the y value here is going to be positive 1, and our x value is going to be 2. And now we can solve for p. So let's see, we, we multiply these together, we get 1 is equal to 8 plus b. And we subtract 8 from both sides to balance the equation and to get b alone. 8 minus 8 is 0. So we have negative 7 is equal to b. All right, then we have everything we need to figure out what this equation is, which is y equals 4 x minus 7. And remember, that is for all the values in this sequence. All right, so let's recap what we have. We have this series right here, this pattern, and we can see that we are adding 4 every time to get the next number. This is the first five terms. We want to know what the 15th was. We could just keep going and adding 4 and adding 4 15 times until we got up there. But like we said, what if it was the 115th term? So we figured out the pattern. The slope was adding 4. We wanted to figure out where it started. And we figured out our equation here was y equals 4x minus 7. So it started at negative 7. That was our 0 term. We want to find the 15th term. Now remember, our x value is 1 for the, or sorry, yeah, our x value is 1 for the first term, and we got negative 3 as our y value. We, that's what we did in our ordered pairs. So that means our x value here is going to be the 15th term. So we're going to substitute x as 15 to figure out what our y term would be. So just like before, we're going to say, y, this time we're trying to find what y is, right? We want to know what the number is in the pattern. So we're going to substitute in what we know, and what we know is that x is equal to 15 to get the 15th term. And then we subtract 7. So let's see. We solve this together. We say 4 times 15 is 60, and 60 minus 7 is 53. So my 15th term in the sequence is 53. Now you can see how it's handy to have the equation of a line there because it would be a whole lot easier to substitute in 115 to figure out what that number was rather than to add 4 115 times. All right, let's try this again. Let's start from the beginning and redo this one more time and see how far we can get. So we have a series here, we have a pattern. And what we want to know is what's the 12th term in this pattern. So first, let's check to make sure that it's a linear pattern, that we're adding or subtracting the same number each time. So let's see. If I subtract 6, I get 44. If I subtract 6 again, I get 38. Subtract 6 again. Yep, it's a linear pattern because I'm subtracting the same thing every time. And the thing that I am subtracting is negative 6. So that means my slope, my common difference, is going to be negative 6. All right, so we want to know what the 12th term is, but first we need to figure out what the first term was that we started with. So remember, if we had ordered pairs here, we said our first number was 50, our second number is 44, our third number is 38, etc. Okay, so what we're going to do is remember this is our x and our y. <clears throat> we're going to substitute into our equation that we're looking for, y equals mx plus plus b. We want to know how to predict that pattern. So we're going to substitute in what we know. We know that y is 50. We know that m is negative 6. We know that x is 1. And what we don't know is where it started. All right, so we'll go ahead and solve that. We have 50 is equal to negative 6 plus b. And we want to know what b is. We want to know where it started. So we will balance the equation by adding 6 to both sides to get rid of this. And we get 56 is equal to b. That means our equation is going to be 
y equals negative 6 for the rate of change, x plus 56. Now I want to know what the twelfth number is, and I could continue to subtract 6 all the way till I got to 12, or now I know I can just use this equation. So now I'm going to take this equation, but I want to know the fifteenth term. Oops, let's try that again. Sorry, we want to find the twelfth term. So we're going to substitute in x is 12, because we want to find the twelfth term. So we're going to substitute in 12 here, plus 56. All right, and now we're just going to solve. So we have negative 6 times 12 is going to give us negative 72, plus 56. We're going to find that the twelfth term here is going to be negative 16. And of course, that does make sense, because we are getting smaller every time. Eventually, we're going to get into the negatives. And so by the time we get to the twelfth term, we are at negative 16. All right, we'll pause here for a second so you have a chance to catch up on the notes. All right, our last one is just a slight twist on this. You're going to find this is still stuff that we already know. This time, they're going to give us that the fourth term is 10, and they're going to give you the common difference, the slope, is negative 1 half, and they want you to find the equation. Hmm, all right, let's see what we have here, guys. We want this equation, y equals mx plus b. Do we have any of those numbers? We do. We do have the slope. The slope is the common difference, and they gave us the common difference is negative one-half. And did they give us a point? Well, actually, they did. They gave us that the fourth term was 10. So there is my point, and so now I can substitute in. For my x value, I'm going to substitute in 4. For my y value, I'm going to substitute in 10. And what I don't have is my y-intercept. This is looking super familiar, right? This is just like the stuff we've been doing the last few days. So now we're going to solve for this. So let's multiply negative 4 times, or sorry, w negative 1 times 4 to get negative 4 divided by 2. And wait, we know negative 4 divided by 2 is just negative 2. Or another way to think of that, half of 4 is 2, and we got that negative sign there. All right, plus b. And now we're going to balance the equation here. So we're going to add 2 to both sides. Negative 2 and positive 2 cancel out. We have that the y-intercept is b. And so now we have our equation. Let's go back to what we have. We want to find the equation for this pattern. And we know that the slope or the common difference is negative 1 half. We know that the y-intercept is 12, that's where the pattern starts, and now we put in x and y so that we can find it for all numbers in this pattern. And there we are. So the last thing you need to do today is to write a summary. How do we solve arithmetic sequences? How are they the same as linear equations? What are the same terms and the different terms, and how can we predict it? So take a minute to write your summary.